Hey everyone, it's Sarah Threadster, Nurse RN.com, and in this video, we're going to be going over our weekly NCLEX practice question. And don't forget to check out the other practice questions in this series. So let's see what our question says. A patient who has a health history of uncontrolled hypertension, coronary artery disease, and diabetes mellitus is prescribed to take propanolol. You have provided the patient with education about this new medication. Which statement by the patient indicates your teaching was effective? A, I will take this medication every morning with grapefruit juice. B, if I miss a dose, it is important that I double the next dose to prevent potential side effects. C, it is important that I monitor my blood glucose level very closely while taking this medication. Or D, I will immediately stop taking this medication if I experience cold hands or feet. So for this particular question, it is wanting to know which statement by the patient is correct about this medication propanolol that they're going to be taking. So we're looking at the correct statement. So out of all these, three are going to be wrong and one is going to be correct. So before we do that, let's analyze this scenario. Now, as you read the scenario, some things should be jumping out at you. For instance, the patient's health history. And they have a history of uncontrolled hypertension, which is high blood pressure. They also have coronary artery disease and diabetes mellitus. Now, let's talk about that drug, propanolol. That's what they're prescribed. Now, let's think back to pharmacology. This is the generic name of the drug. Generic names tend to have the same letters for the ending, and the ending for this is O-L-O-L. -L. Which drugs end in O-L-O-L? -O -L? These are our beta blockers. So propanolol is a beta blocker. Now, it falls under the non-selective category. There are several groups of beta blockers. You have ones that act on just that heart tissue, specifically their beta-1 receptor blockers, and then you have these, which act on both the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Now let's backtrack and talk about what beta blockers do. Let's review in our pharmacology, because it's going to make sense when we're throwing in that this patient has diabetes mellitus, because whenever you have diabetes mellitus and you're taking a beta blocker, you have to watch out for some certain things that can happen. Okay, so what do beta blockers do? In a nutshell, beta blockers block your sympathetic nervous system. What does your sympathetic nervous system do? It is responsible for that fight or flight response. So whenever you're stressed or in danger, that system kicks in. It increases your heart rate, so you get tachycardia. You get bronchodilation, so you're gonna breathe deeper so you can run away and get out of there. Now, non-selective, which is propanolol, it blocks beta receptors one and two, remember. Now, where are beta one receptors? They're mainly in your heart. So whenever you take this drug, it acts on those neurotransmitters, specifically norepinephrine and epinephrine. So those will be blocked and in the heart, and what will happen is that you will get a slower heart rate instead of that tachycardia. Now, think about diabetes mellitus. Whenever these patients have hypoglycemia, what are those classic signs and symptoms? One of the most classic signs and symptoms is tachycardia. Their heart rate goes up. I've had a lot of patients tell me, my heart rate's increased. We might need to check my sugar. I feel like it's down. Now, if they're taking a beta blocker that is blocking that response, they're not going to have that classic tachycardia. So they may later on, their sugar will drop so much and it may be too late before they can treat it, before they can treat it appropriately. Now, beta 2 receptors, where are these mainly located? They are located in various places. Number one, your lungs. You have two lungs, that's how I remember beta two. They can also be in the skeletal muscle, acts in the liver. One thing I wanna concentrate on is that liver and the muscle. Now, what these beta receptors do, they increase a process called glycogenolysis. What is that big old word? What it means is that 
Whenever a patient has hypoglycemia, the body tries to correct that. So it will do glycogenolysis, which is going to break down glycogen to glucose, which is going to increase that blood sugar. However, this is being blocked in this patient, this process, it's slowing it down. So when this diabetic has hypoglycemia, they're not gonna be able to increase that blood sugar naturally with that process. So you have this double-edged sword. You have where they're not gonna be able to notice their blood glucose because they don't have that tachycardia going on and they don't have that process of increasing that blood sugar naturally themselves. So those two things are going to be blocked. Now, let's look at our options. You probably are already figuring out the option based on what we just discussed with that and looking at these, but let's break them down and discuss why they're wrong. Okay, option A. I will take the medication every morning with grapefruit juice. Okay, big thing that jumps out at me, grapefruit juice. Why would a patient want to take medication with grapefruit juice all the time? One thing that was always drilled in my head in nursing school is never take grapefruit juice. Okay, with beta blockers specifically, you don't want to take this type of medication or various medications with grapefruit juice because grapefruit juice contains chemicals that can slow the absorption of the medication. So the patient wouldn't want to take their beta blockers with grapefruit juice. They need to be educated to actually avoid that and to take it strictly with water. So this is wrong. Option B says, if I miss a dose, it is important that I double the next dose to prevent potential side effects. If a patient misses a dose of their beta blockers, they don't need to double the dose. They need to take it as soon as they remember unless that next dose is due. Because these medications, as we talked about with the beta blockers, um, they decrease your heart rate. They do a lot of things to your heart. And if you're taking double the dose, they are at high risk of a cardiac event going into um, some lethal rhythm. So that is incorrect. Option C, it's talking about monitoring your blood glucose levels very closely. And I just discussed why that is our answer because the way the beta-1 and the beta-2 receptors work with the maintaining the blood glucose and the patient is already diabetic, taking insulin probably, that's what we assume, and um, so they have to monitor their blood sugar, especially with these non-selective beta blockers. So that is our answer. Now let's look and see why D is wrong. This patient says that they're gonna stop taking their beta blocker immediately if they experience cold hands and feet. Well, this is a normal side effect with these non-selective beta blockers because remember, they're not just acting on that cardiac tissue, they're acting on other areas. And a lot of patients I've had actually report, my hands are so cold since I started taking this drug, my feet. So this is actually a side effect that can happen. And another thing that makes this statement wrong is that you would never just immediately stop taking a beta blocker. They need to be tapered off of this because if they just all of a sudden quit taking that medication, they can go have cardiac death or something worse can happen. So that answer is wrong for that reason. Okay, so that wraps up this NCLEX practice question. Be sure to check out our other NCLEX lectures and quizzes and nursing skill videos. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.